Hey guys, it's Mrs. Heiser with another art video for you. This week we're going to learn about a famous artist named Greg Siegel. Now Greg Siegel, this is a picture of him, uh, he is still alive and he is a famous photographer. So you can see some pictures behind me that he photographed. Uh, he would photograph mostly kids, some families, um, and we'll talk about kind of what was around them. So this week's project we're going to do is going to be kind of a fun one. We're going to do a quarantine self-portrait where you get to be the one in the photograph. A self-portrait means a picture of yourself. Um, and so you'll have to have mom or dad help you with this. And we're going to put things around you that either represent yourself or things that you've been doing while this time in quarantine has been going on. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit, but first I want to show you some of his work. So Greg Seagal um, is still alive. Uh, he lives in California um, and he uses photography to kind of explore culture and um, make a statement. Um, so talking about our identity, memory, behavior, um, our roles, beliefs, and values. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. He'd be a good artist to learn about. Um, so he started his work and he did this series called Seven Days of Garbage. Sounds kind of nasty, right? Where he would ask families or people to save their garbage for seven days and then be photographed with it. Um, so here's a family and you can see all the garbage around them. Um, so he kind of lay them down and, and take a photo from above, which we've talked about before. That means a bird's eye view. So you're looking down like from a like a where a bird would be looking down on the earth. So that's called a bird's eye view. Okay, so that'll be important when we do our work. Um, and so he would photograph people within their garbage to make a statement about how much waste we produce. Um, maybe kind of trying to keep stuff out of the landfills. I watched a little documentary on him and some of the people were saying after they saw how much garbage they used, they wanted to make a change and start using less waste or, or creating less waste. So they would uh, get food from the farmer's markets instead of, um, you know, packaged foods. Um, so it was good to make a statement and to make people aware of how much garbage they actually produced. Um, here's another one from that series with just one woman it kind of looks like she's like crawling away from garbage like she's oh no um i thought that was kind of interesting think about how much garbage you would produce we have a family of six people we have two babies that are in diapers we have a ton of garbage so it's kind of good to reflect on our behaviors and things that we do and how it affects the earth um so after that series he um decided to do one called the daily bread so here's kind of like how it was publicized Greg Siegel's Daily Bread. Okay, what kids eat around the world? So he kind of looked at, uh, around the world at what kids eat and he asked them to journal for seven days, again, a whole week, just like the garbage one, um, what they ate. And so you can kind of see what these kids are, are consuming within a week. Uh, and he found that the healthiest diets uh, around the world, nine out of the 10 of them were from Africa where they eat vegetables, fruit, nuts, um, and sadly, the U.S., 60% of our diets come from super processed foods, things like McDonald's um, and kind of just junk food, right, um, which we've been guilty of eating, especially during this time at home, um, just kind of not so healthy, throw a pizza in, but you know what, it's okay in moderation, but Sometimes maybe people eat a little bit too much. So he wanted to raise some awareness about what kids eat around the world. So here's a kid here. And he would tell a little story about them. So back here, there's this kid from uh, Brazil. And he would photograph him with all the food he ate within a week. So he'd have him journal it. And then they would make the same food and put it around the kid to be photographed with. And he'd tell a little story about the kid. He'd kind of interview them and, and see, um, you know, what what they like and and tell a little bit about the kid not and where they're from not just what they ate so this little girl he photographed and um it says leona or nona is her name she's six and she's from glendale california um nona lives with her mother and cleo her beloved cat in an apartment in glendale california she can make oatmeal and pancakes and once when her mother was very sick she fed her Nona grew a gigantic tomato plant and began to take over everything, and it is now as big as a tree. Her mother makes her eat vegetables, especially broccoli. Her diet has as many colors as the rainbow. 
though Nona also has not just a sweet tooth, but many sugar teeth. Nona's role models are her mother, her teachers, and Joan Jett. When she goes to sleep at night, Nona sometimes imagines her Nana as an angel watching over her. So we just tell a little story about the kid and, and what they like and where they live and how old they are. So that, that was pretty interesting. So we went around the world to do this um, and, and photograph different kids and what they ate. Um, so this photograph is much different than the first that I showed you. And this is um, someone, a nine-year-old from Brazil. Um, and so they were photographed and told a little story about them. But you see the fruit and vegetables and food that she eats is much different. So kind of told a little story about her from Brazil. Um, and it goes on and on and there's so many of them. So I'm only going to share a few. But this is a girl, Greta. And she lives in Hamburg, Germany. She is seven. And Greta lives with her mother and younger sister in Hamburg. But she spends quite a bit of time with her grandparents too. On the path to her grandparents' home is a great big chestnut tree, and in autumn, Greta searches in the foliage for chestnuts with her little sister. Greta's favorite food is fish sticks with mashed potatoes and applesauce. She can't stand rice pudding. One thing Greta is really good at is snapping her fingers, both hands at the same time. At night, while falling asleep, Greta thinks mostly about her mother, who is usually in the next room watching TV. So you can see her food is quite different as well. I also want you to recognize or look at what they're being photographed on. So this almost looks like um, it could be like a big blanket or something. So maybe think, do you want to be photographed on the ground in the grass? Do you want to be photographed on a wood floor or carpet? Or do you want to put some kind of blanket down um, for a backdrop before you organize your things? Now yours aren't going to be food, but we'll talk about that again in just a moment. And I'll show you some cool examples of what you could make. Okay, so that was Greta, who's seven. Um, now we have this little boy, Bradley. Bradley is nine and he was photographed uh, in California where he lives. Bradley is a boy of few words. He lives in San Gabriel Valley, northeast of Los Angeles with his parents and younger brother. Bradley's favorite food is sushi. He dislikes shrimp and mushrooms and observed that he doesn't eat enough greens. He also loves to read and swim and enjoys helping others. Before he goes to sleep, Bradley prays that he will do well in school. He also wishes his parents would let him have a small fluffy dog. When he grows up, Bradley wants to be a dentist. Um, so cute little narratives about the kids that he photographed. And this last one that I'm going to show you from this series called Daily Bread, again, talking about what the kids ate. Um, and photographing them with that was this one of a girl um, from France. And I kind of like how she is posed a little bit differently. So you'll see she almost looks like she's rock climbing, um, which I thought was super cool. So again, he tells a little story about her and where she lives in France and kind of things about her and what she likes also with the food around her. Now, after showing all of these series of kids and how much they ate around the world, he also wanted to bring awareness um, to some countries and areas that don't have enough food. Um, so he did a series called The, the Unbread, the, the Daily Unbread, uh, where he focused on a Venezuelan um, refugee camp with mothers and their children who really didn't have a lot. Um, so if you look at this picture, this is, and they're photographed, you can notice the much different background um, just on cardboard boxes. They don't really have a home there. They don't have much. You see very little food, very little clothes, um, and maybe one stuffed animal or a pillow or blanket. Um, they really don't have a lot. So he wanted to raise awareness. Um, and they actually raised money for people in Venezuela for, for in this camp um, to get food and to feed the hungry. So I thought that was really cool of him to make this statement and then think deeper about it um, and what way he could help people. Um, so here's one from that series. Um, and, and one more. And so they, again, this is a mother with her two children and you see, they don't have a whole lot of food, uh, or a whole lot of belongings, couple pairs of shoes, couple toys, but really not much, um, a little bit of water. Um, so I thought that was really neat of him. And one last one of a boy again, photographed on that cardboard. Um, and this is what he ate in a week, just bread. Imagine having that diet, just bread, pretty boring, maybe a few fruits, right? Um, so 
using art to raise awareness. Um, and I thought that was really cool. Now, for our project, we're going to think a little bit different here, and we're going to make this a quarantine photo. So not about what you eat. I mean, you could include some things that you like to eat, but more about you yourself. So you could do it as a self-portrait, um, putting up things that you like um, or food that you like or um, what you've been doing during this time at home. Okay, so you might include your Chromebook um, or iPad or if you video game, uh, your video game stuff. Or for myself, I might include some some paint brushes or paint um, since obviously I love art and creating. I might include some of my wonderful famous artist clothes or my camera because I love photography. Um, I might include some stuff of baseball because I love the Cubs. Um, so just kind of tell about yourself in this kind of self-portrait. So what you'll do is I would like you to find a background. Now I had this at home, um, a big backdrop of like the stars. You might have a blanket or something to lay down. And then I want you to just kind of organize your things around it. So this is Brody's. Um, I'm using him and Brevin as my examples. So Brody loves sports. So he chose to put in there his Packers football. Uh, he wanted to kind of pose like Air Jordan. So maybe think of your pose. There's another word for you. Um, a pose is how you are photographed. So do you want to be, you know, doing this cool layup or um, like that girl kind of rock climbing or do you want to just be flat on the ground looking up okay um, the next thing is how you're going to arrange your your pieces so leave some room for you in the center and think about the whole composition the composition is like your whole space that you're going to use so he laid things all around him you see a video game controller you see his basketball his baseball hats and baseball cards pictures of our family. He loves Javier Baez and the Cubs and some of his signed baseballs that he has. So those are all things that are important to him. And then he wanted to pose like in this Air Jordan pose, which I thought was kind of unique and kind of cool. Okay, good idea. Um, so another idea, you could, you know, have mom or dad take these. All I did was stand on a little chair and photograph him from that bird's eye view from above. You could also mess around. A lot of parents on their phones have little photo editors and turn it different colors. You could turn it black and white. Um, you could um, put like a light flare. I'll show you Brevin's here. I'll put like a little light flare coming in from the top. So he pictured himself taking a picture. He loves his little loot llama and his big stuffed bear. Um, he also has some snacks in there that he likes. Um, he loves mac and cheese and vanilla wafers. He loves these little bites, which again, not the healthiest food, but he loves them. Um, so he has his basketball too, some fruit strips, much healthier. Um, but little things about him in that picture that he likes um, or that tell about him. Now, I thought he'd probably want to include uh, his Chromebook or, you know, he loves going on his iPad. Um, so you will fill the space with things about you leave some room for you in the center and have mom or dad just take a camera or their phone and take that picture from above. It doesn't have to be high. You don't even have to get on that chair. You can just hold the camera up above. Now, Greg Seagal's pictures were taken 13 feet above his subject. He used a giant ladder and photographed from way above because he had so many things to fit in there for a whole week worth of garbage or food um, to make that statement. Okay, but you certainly don't have to do that. Um, be safe. So collaging, another word for you, collage, kind of collage your items around you. Use it to make a self-portrait. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Now, don't forget to share these with me. Please either email them to me or you can uh, certainly put them on Artsonia using the Artsonia app. Um, but I'd love to see what you guys come up with for your quarantine self-portrait in the style of Greg Siegel. Thanks, guys. Have fun with this one. Bye.